Hi everyone, my name is Abel Greek and Toma. I'm from Greatest Design Consult. This is my WhatsApp contact. You can reach me on this number. You can call me on any of these numbers, okay? We have covered up to 25 different softwares, like you know, on our YouTube channel. If you go down below the description of this video, you're actually going to find a link to that channel. Make sure that you visit the channel to keep yourself busy, okay? Um, so today, I'm going to be showing you uh, this particular software, which is called RCD2000. It's actually a great software, most especially if you are a beginner in design. Please, I will encourage you to lay your hands on this software. It's more like a manual design, but it gives you a lot of deep insight on what design should, what design it's all about. Okay, so um, this is the AutoCAD file, which I'm actually going to be using. Uh, if you come here right now, you're going to find uh, on this folder now here, I have BM2000, BS2000, CL2000, FP2000, RB2000, uh, RS2000, SL, ST, okay, and then I have what form. So today I'm going to be showing you the terminal method, which is actually the much more easier method, which is the interactive method. It's very, very interactive. Um, to actually work with. Uh, you can see this is our general arrangement. General arrangement is a structural layout, okay? You can see our general arrangement, you are only going to be seeing beam, columns, and then panels, which is our slabs, okay? You can see here I have F beam one, F beam two, so I'm going to go into all of that later as we progress in the training. But today I'm going to be going into the slab design itself. Okay, like you know, every structural member, when you are doing your design, the first structural member you should design is the slab. The slab will take the loading down to the beam. The beam will take it to the column. The column now transfers the load to the foundation. So uh, this is our panel. We have panel one, we have panel two, we have panel three, and then four. That means we have four panels in this design. When an architect gives you a drawing, you are actually going to take off the, the um, openings, okay? You delete the the doors you delete the windows okay all of that are actually not useful to you when you take them all off you know you connect everything together everywhere is connected there is no opening anywhere in this drawing so um so all we have here are just strictly general members so we have staircase here too as well but you know staircase is an independent structural member that has no loading that is attached to the building itself. We are going to go into that later on. Um, as you all know, you can see from here it is represented. You can see this one comes this way, this one comes this way. But you will notice there's a difference when it comes to this case. You can see it only goes in this direction. Okay, so what this means is that this is actually a two-way slab. This is also a two-way slab and this is one-way slab. This is also a one-way slab. So. Uh, there's a way to get your two-way slab and your one-way slab, like you know, uh, it is by your LY over LX. The LY is the longest span, then the LX is the short span. So when you divide your, your long span by your short span, when it gives you a value that is greater than two, that makes that panel a two-way slab. But when it gives you a value that is less than two, that makes that panel a one-way slab. A two-way slab. Sorry, I hope I'm not misinterpreting this. When you get greater than two, it's actually a one-way slab. <laughs> when you get greater than two, it's a one-way slab. When you get uh, less than two, it is actually a two-way slab. So we are going to demonstrate it right away. So here, right now, if you look at this, uh, you can see this is two, two, three, zero. So if I compare it with this. Um, so let me measure this and see what do I have here. Oh, oh, what happened? This is not correct. Sorry, this this system wants to start misbehaving. Okay, fine. Now I have 7630. Automatically, when you divide this by this value, it's definitely going to give you a value that is greater than 
2. Okay. So, because for that, okay, uh, this is, this is, it's 7, 6, 8, 0, divided by, oh God, clear, 7, 6, 8, 0, divided by 2, 2, 3, 0. We are going to get three points so it's actually greater than two so that makes this panel a one way slab if you divide this this is six three two zero six two three zero uh six two three zero divided by three eight three zero uh that is the value for this three eight three zero uh you're going to get a value that is less than two so one point six Two. So for that reason, this panel is actually a two-way slab. If you try it here, you are actually going to get uh, less than. Uh, sorry, you are going to get greater than two. So if that is correct, so this is we have two panels that are two-way slab. We have two panels that are one-way slab. Okay. So um, now uh, let's jump right into our RCD 2000. If you already love what you're seeing, please just like this video. Make sure that you actually give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel is 100% free. You see a red button down below written subscribe. Just click on that button and you have subscribed already. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, this is our SL. This is our docs box. The reason why I'm using docs box all of these are in one folder. I actually just copied this and pasted in this folder and I dropped this in this folder as well. Uh, and also this, this is our AutoCAD file that I'm actually using to demonstrate right now. And then this is the UDL. It contains, I, I sorry, not like a UDL, like uniformly distributed load. Uh, I just named it UDL because I just used that to uh, type in some of the breakdown of the calculations we are actually going to be using in the course of this training okay so um to design these panels you can see we have one two three four panels so our panels are actually four so um the reason why i'm using dogs box let me come back here and show you something quickly so when you go to your computer you go to system properties uh if i scroll down here you're going to see 64 bit operating system so what that means is that this my system is actually a 64-bit operating system. So if your system is 64-bit, you need docs box in order to run RCD2000 on your system. If your system is 32-bit, you actually don't need docs box to run RCD2000 on your system. I hope you understand my point. All right, if that is correct, so you can see here now I have panel one, I have panel two, I have panel three, I have panel four. So here I will go back to the RCD 2000 folder and then I'm going to start my slab design immediately. Like you know, SL 2000 is for slab, ST 2000 is for staircase, okay? So all of these as the name implies, BM 2000 for beam, BS 2000 for base, CL 2000 is for column. So we are starting with our slab SL2000. All I need to do is just to drag my SL2000 file and I will drop on it on the docs box. All right. So after dropping that, you can see here, like I said, I'm going to be using the terminal method, which is the interactive method. You can see this is actually very interactive. It says, welcome to slab analysis and design to BS8110 program developed and written by Victor O. Oyenuga. That's VO Oyenuga, October 2001. Input is expected via screen on file. Okay, so please enter letter T if it's via the terminal. Please enter letter F if it is via external. So we are going to be using the terminal method because it's very, very interactive. Um, once you are grounded in the terminal method, the external method is actually going to be very, very easy for you to actually work with. Um, it's not going to be that complicated, but as a beginner, I will always encourage you to start with the terminal method. So if I type T and I press enter, that means I have accepted to use T and press enter. So I'll please enter P 
if the output is by printer so i'm going to be using uh external method here external file which is f because i actually don't want to connect this with my printer yet so i'll press f for enter and then enter the output file name so i'm going to name this file a slab design so you can see how easy that is it's asking me for a password i'm going to press enter because i don't want to type any password for this so the job reference you can type in the name of the job the project rather propose uh let's say propose residential residential development so i'm gonna leave it like this so design engineer i'm just going to type engineer please it is all this is good to actually make it initial capitalization that's an initial capital letter let's say engineer james for example and i click on enter uh, dates uh, february 2022 so there, there's no need for you to type in the day itself okay because uh, your designs may take you some number of days to actually finish so it's it's just right for you to just put the month and the the year okay so characteristic strength of concrete and the characteristic strength of steel that is actually what is asking me here enter concrete and steel characteristic stress so for my concrete i'm going to be using a value of 20 and then for my steel i'm going to use 410 okay this is actually the characteristic strength of this material okay when tested in the lab okay so um this is let's say we are using uh, a 410 strength of material for my steel and then that of my concrete is actually going to be 20 grade of uh, concrete so enter the number of panels i'm designing four number of panels so i would uh, enter you can see it's very interactive so i'm just reading what is there and i'm answering whatever is asking me so i have four different panels so i'll start with my panel one which is p1 it says enter id number for panel one for enter panel id number so for my panel one now i'll go back to my drawing my panel one is actually a two-way slab if you can remember when we did our ly over lx which i presented here you can see this one crossing this is actually telling you is a two-way slab this one that is just single is telling you that uh, all our main bars are going to be going this way that makes it a one-way slab uh, i know some of you have so many questions uh, but if a civil engineering student or a graduate i believe you should understand this because you must have been taught in school right uh, so is a two ways says enter one for cantilever slab enter two for supported slab that's a simply supported slab enter this 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 okay so this is if a, a two-way slab so i will type four and i'll press enter because that panel is a two-way slab so the second panel now is asking me is actually this panel which is actually a one-way slab so i will type uh, so for a one-way slab which is simply supported slab okay you are going to type in two okay so you can see how interactive this is so number three which is actually this is also a two-way slab um where is this number three is a two-way slab which is four then number four which is panel four is a one-way slab which is two so i'll type two and i'll press enter so enter oh my god i made a mistake there input for input number three enter panel id number sorry i'm supposed to enter 
the pinel IV number for this. Please, uh, this is very, 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 very important for you to take note. Once you make a mistake on the terminal method, there is no room for you to make, to correct it. So you have to start afresh. That's why you have to be very, very careful. Thank God I made this mistake in order for me to explain to you. Okay, so I'll drag this SL2000 and drop on my docs box and I'm going to take it all over again. Okay, but this time around, I'm going to make it much more faster. So for here, I'm going to type my F and I'll press enter. Output name, I'll name it Slab Design. Okay, then password, no password. Job reference, I'll just name it Propose. Um, propose Residential Development. Engineer James. Okay, February twenty twenty two. Concrete twenty comma four ten. Um, space four ten rather. For my concrete is grade twenty. For my steel is four ten. I hope you understand that. Number of panels. I'm designing four panels. So uh, panel ID, which is P1 uh, for my panel 1. Uh, and my panel 1 is a two-way slab, which I will type 4. I believe you remember this. For my panel 2, which is P2. And then it's asking me to enter what kind of slab is that. So it's a one-way slab, which is 2, simply supported. I believe you remember we've gone through this already before. So for my panel 3, which is P3, okay, I'm supposed to always type in the name first. And then it's actually a two-way slab, if you can remember. Then my P4, which is panel 4. And then it's asking me what type of slab is my P4. So let's go for P4, which is a one-way slab, okay. So which is 2. I believe you understand to this point. Now for my panel one is asking me for my LX, LY, UDL, depth, slab, slash depth ratio. Amazing. Now, if you enter the LX, which is the short span for that panel, the LY, which is the long span, the UDL, uh, which I'm going to show you the breakdown right away. Then the slab slash depth ratio, I'm going to show you that too. Uh, please, I will encourage you to get um, Simplify Reinforced Concrete Design by Victor O. Oyenuga. Please, uh, it has some of uh, this uh, breakdown, okay? How to come up with your uniformly distributed load, how to get your depth slash, uh, your, de your slab depth span slash depth ratio and all of that. They have their values there, your finishes and all of that, okay? Uh, so my LX, like I said, is the short span for this panel, which is 3830. So I'm going to type 3830 and my longest span here is 6230. So I'm going to type that for this panel. So my short span is 3830 and then my long span is 6230. And then uh, my UDL is what I'm going to show you right now. Um, the UDL, if you are conversant with your designs, uh, you know the depth of this slab, we are assuming it to be a zero, um, which is 150 mm. That is uh, the depth we want to actually use. Uh, you know, when you are doing your design, you have to get an assume cross section. Then when you try it and it fails, then you change uh, that cross section. So we are using a 150 mm depth of uh, slab multiply by the density of concrete which is 24 if you multiply that you are going to get 3.6 kilonewton per meter square my finishes is 1.2 kilonewton per meter square my partition allowance is 1 point is 1 kilonewton per meter square sorry um as you can see what i'm using here is based on the fact that um uh, okay let me just go down if you want if you sum up all of this 3.6 plus 1.2 you are going to get 4.8 
plus 1 which is going to give you 5.8 now your life load is 1.5 because this is a residential drawing we are assuming this to be a residential des design so um when you are designing for residential is different from a commercial okay when you are designing for maybe like an assembly and all of that so the values they vary so there are specific uh, values that you adopt depending on whatever kind of design whatever class of design um class of um, building that you are actually dealing with so it varies so by the time you add with your life load then you multiply by the factor of safety because you know this is bs8110 uh, for life load and that of uh, your life load 1.6 your dead load which is 1.4 all of that it boils down to 10.52 kilo newton per meter square i believe you are familiar with this little calculation it's very very easy um as a civil engineer you should be familiar with that so uh if that is correct so our value here that we got from here is 10.52 so i'm going to type 10.52 all right so uh my slab span slash depth ratio it's actually uh this is a so it's a two-way slab it says 23 anytime you have at least one edge discontinuous use 23 so uh this is for a two-way and then i have edges that are discontinuous i'm going to explain that um you can see here discontinuous here also discontinuous this part continuous this part also continuous i have explained all of these edges in my previous trainings on youtube so go please visit that channel and actually so in order for you to have an insight of what i'm talking about uh this this here it discontinues at this place at this point also this edge also it discontinues but you can see this panel here continues around here it also continues around this place that means here there is no any other panel by this side there is no other other panel by this side it is actually facing outside directly so that is why it is called discontinuous here is also called discontinuous when you have your reinforcement at this point it has to return back inside at this point it will also return back inside but when it comes to this place it will go into this panel i hope you understand yeah it's not difficult to understand you just need to take your time to understand it okay that is correct this panel is actually i'm going to be using 23 so i'll type enter uh sorry i made another mistake oh God. my udl sorry uh i'm just going to enter the slab lxly udl depth my depth of this panel here is supposed to be uh 150 mm and then before i enter my 23 so um i'm just going to use this um sorry i'm going to correct that on the next panel uh so um enter for what type of panel is this so this panel has two adjacent edges that are discontinuous so this side and this side are adjacent to each other so these two sides are actually adjacent to each other and they are discontinuous so um i know definitely this panel will definitely fail because of that error that i made there so um let me just uh two adjacent edge two adjacent edge is discontinuous which is four so i'll type four and i'll press enter so I'll correct that please in, in the fourth panel that I'm going to design. So you are going to, in the third panel I'm going to design. So you're going to see that, how to do that rightly. So uh, enter the slab span UDL depth and number of point loads. So uh, this is for panel two. So for my panel two, as you can see here, um, of this short span zero. So when you are designing a, a one way slab, uh the span that you should design for is the short span because the short span is going to be carrying the longer span <laughs> here is actually somehow complicated to understand sometimes but um your reinforcement your main reinforcement are going to go in this direction 
this along the short span okay so the reinforcement along the short span are going to be your main reinforcement here you can have minimal reinforcement okay and then it will carry so uh what that is just what it means by you having a one way that means your main reinforcement are spanning along the short span Okay, so uh, the short span is what we consider when you are designing for a one-way slab, which is 2230. That is what I'm going to type in there. 2230. Then my UDL, if you can remember, is 10.52. Uh -huh. So this is actually where I made that mistake there. This depth here, I'm supposed to make it 150 mm. And then number of point load is going to ask you about four different number of point loads it's going to ask you if there is a point load uh, if there is a point load number of point loads it's going to ask you for a a trapezoidal um it's going to ask you for a triangular load it's going to have you ask you for a trapezoidal load. It's going to ask you for that trapezoidal height. Okay. Number one is going to ask you for point load. It's going to ask you for trapezoidal load. It's going to ask you for, sorry, it's going to ask you for triangular load. It's going to ask you for trapezoidal load. Then it's going to ask you for trapezoidal height. So, um, so on this panel, I'm going to assume that uh, there is no point load that is actually on this uh, slab okay so there is no point load on that slab this slab is actually is in the building itself so when you have railings like around your balcony your 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 balcony yeah uh, you know you have some other railings and all of that 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 will most likely be acting as pointed load on panels okay but here we don't have any point load so i have point load my zero then my triangular load is also zero my trapezoidal load is zero and then my trapezoidal height is zero this is a bit confusing i know but you know you can look at some shapes sometimes in your building that will be acting on your panel directly that are in triangular shapes or in trapezoidal shapes and what uh, it is the height of that trapezium itself so uh click on enter so uh coming to panel three is a bit similar like the panel one which i made a mistake so i'm going to take that again my short span here is three eight three zero my long span is six two three zero my udl is ten point five two and then my depth this is where i made a mistake at the first panel that i designed and then my slab to be 23 so please you can correct that on your own uh, so you can see here now it's going to ask me what type of panel is this uh, you can see here the only difference between this panel and this panel is that this panel here has only one edge that is discontinuous and that edge that is discontinuous uh and then a little part of this is also discontinuous okay so then well i can assume this to be two edges that are discontinuous because the major part of this panel is actually discontinuous only a small portion of it is actually continuous which is around here that you have another panel you know the staircase here the reinforcement don't come out this way it has to return back into the panel so um so these two edges are discontinuous let's say we have a two adjacent edge that is actually discontinuous so i have two adjacent edge that is discontinuous which is four okay so it's similar to that of my l2 so my panel four slab span uh which is this is one seven three zero okay so i'll type in one seven three zero and then it's asking me for a udl which is 10.52 then it's asking me for the depth which is 150 then it's now asking me for number of point load you can remember i said trapezoidal load is zero 
uh, sorry, point load is zero, trapezoidal uh, triangular load is zero, trapezoidal, trapezoidal <laughs> load is zero, uh, trapezoidal height is zero, <laughs> English, chai. <laughs> okay, uh, one, seven, three, zero. Uh, yeah, so everything here is correct. So that is it. Now, uh, let's see what happened here. It says, getting in steel, this, 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 this. Call from two ways, this, 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 this. Call from slab statements, is this. Program now is getting in slab one. Yeah, you can see. Um, let me just, so it, it, the design is done. All I need to do now is just to go down to my RCD 2000 folder. You are going to see that here which is this. So um, you can remember I named it slab design. Oh my God, I hope this thing worked. I'm seeing zero kilobytes. Oh my God, that didn't work because of uh, my first slab. You know, I made a mistake there. So, but that's actually how to come about it. I can just quickly take just one panel because of time. Um, but please, that is the way you go about it. And then it generates your design for you. Output slab. Let me just make this very brief. Slab, no password, job reference, propose. Oh, that is why in this software you have to be very, 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 very careful because um, one mistake like this can render everything you are doing useless. That's the challenge uh, with it, with the terminal method, okay? But that of external method is not like that. So the external method, you can actually just write. It's more like a program. Once you write it, you can go back and re-edit and re-edit and re-edit. You can use it over and over again. So that has, you have the opportunity to, you know, make your work much more easier and faster. But you must be grounded in this to understand the software very well first before you go into the external method. So I'll press enter number of panel. Let me assume I'm going to design only panel one. So I made a mistake there in that panel one. That is the reason why this did not execute. So enter panel ID number is panel one. And what kind of panel is that? I'm going to call it a, a two-way slab. So it's a two-way slab. My LX is 3830. Uh, this is actually going to work this time around because uh, I made a mistake in the first one. So that's why I'm having that issue that it did not generate it for me. So UDL and my depth is 150. And then the span slash depth ratio is 23. I believe you remember all of this. So I'm just going over what I have done already before. So it's actually a two adjacent edges that are discontinuous so which is four i press four and i press enter that's all so um i want to believe this has worked oh good you can see it here slab this is the last one i did just now uh, so if i double click on it i'll use notepad to open it so you can see the design has been done 100%. Okay, so please, you can go over all the panels just like I did. But this time, make sure you don't make any errors. Because once you make any error, it will actually render everything that you are doing useless. So, you know, I was just trying to rush and give you this quickly. Because I just wanted this video to be very, very brief. Okay, but you can see this is actually what design is all about. You can see this is actually what we call a design. You can print out this report, attach it, and send to 
uh, whatever regulatory body that are that regulates building in your state. <laughs> okay, if you are in Abuja, it's FCDA. If you are in Kaduna, it's Kasubda. Okay, so you go and submit attaching with your detailed drawing. So in your AutoCAD environment, you go and then you do your detailing. You can see which is panel one. Uh, the LX3830, LY6230, LY over LX is one point. You can see that manual calculation I did is giving me the value here automatically by itself, short span coefficient. So you can, you can own your design completely. You can even do this calculation manually to confirm this. So as we go further, I'm going to be taking you through deeper into the software that you understand, okay? It gives you a deeper understanding of what design is all about. So you can see the span here, Y12 at 250 center to center for my bottom bar. My uh, Y12 at 250 mm center to center for my top bar. That is for my short span, okay? So for my long span, is the same thing too here that we have uh, 250 mm center to center for my bottom bar. 250 mm center center for my top bar so all you need to do is just to go into your slab detail and then you detail that panel do i even have any detail drawing here i don't think i have any detail drawing here okay i don't have any detail drawing here but as we progress in the training you are going to see how i'm going to use that particular value to actually what I got here to do my detailing in my AutoCAD environment. So if you love what you're seeing, please, I will advise you to like this video, just give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, you see a red button down below the description, um, down this below this video, just click on that red button written subscribe and you are subscribed already. Go down below the description of this video, you find a link to this channel, visit the channel, to keep yourself busy click on that bell icon it's very important when you click on that bell icon it gives you a notification you are always notified that i have posted a new video so you can follow me you don't miss out on anything that i'm actually posting that has to do with engineering so make sure you stay safe and make sure you stay blessed